Do you ever sit at your desk and think, what am I gonna work on today during your PhD? Well, been there, done that. And during my second year of my PhD, I found a solution against this problem. And it lies in Gantt diagrams. So in this video, I will teach you how you can create Gantt diagrams using ChatGPT. And this will basically maximize your productivity during your PhD. We will cover all topics from defining your PhD goals, breaking them down into bite-sized pieces, plugging them in into this Gantt diagram Excel chart, and using ChatGPT to speed up the process a little bit. And in the end, I will give you a free Gantt diagram Excel template that you can download and use for your own studies. So stay tuned. Before we start with the video, quick introduction. If you don't know me yet, hi, I'm Ainur. I'm a third year PhD student at Imperial College London in chemical engineering. And I made it my mission to teach you every secret in academia video by video through all my social media channels. So without further ado, let's dive right into the video. So the main problem in academia is that nobody tells you what to do. You have this one research goal, this one research problem, but there is no one that tells you how to get to that goal and how to solve that research problem. In a corporate world, you'd have your boss and your boss would give you task and it would be like, hey, do this, do that, do that. And if you have questions, come to me. Well, in your PhD, it's just like, okay, like this is your research problem, go solve it now. Don't ask me for any advice, I don't know nothing. Just find a way to solve this problem. And usually then what happens is you just sit there sometimes and you just wonder, okay, like what now? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? How, how can I fill up my day? And this is where I found Gunchart super, super useful. They saved me and they really made my PhD progress much, much faster. And I highly recommend you to try them out yourself. And this is basically how I would approach Gantt diagrams. So number one, first thing you're gonna do, if you're somewhere in past your first year in your PhD, then it makes sense. Like if you're in the second year in your PhD, it makes sense to think of your PhD in chapters, okay? So this means get, go to the library of like, PhD students that recently graduated from your research group, download their thesis, and then look at the thesis structure of people from your research group, just to get inspired, right? And then think of your own research and think of like what chapters would make sense to put into your thesis. This is super important because a PhD is a long, long project over several years and you want to have like a goal you want to have like a guideline that you can go back to when you feel confused so that you know okay where do I want to go because in the end you have to write up a thesis right so do that create like in your mind and write these chapters down chapter one literature review chapter two methodology chapter three results on this and that and so on right so then there are two types of Gantt diagrams and I have two I have one that is long term where I basically divide my goals from the beginning until the end of my PhD. So it basically has the years and the months in it, but it's a very coarse or a very undetailed diagram. It's just meant to be a little bit of a guideline for me so that I know where I have to be approximately with my goals, but it's not something that will help me with the problem that I stated in the beginning, that I sit down and I don't know what to do. This Gantt diagram won't help me with that. But still, I recommend you to put all the chapters that you wrote down and put them into your, your bigger Gantt diagram, the long-term one, so that you don't lose track of how things progress and that you just have an idea. Because a lot of PhD students, when they're in their final year, they start to panic and they're like, okay, like what? I never thought of my PhD in chapters and I don't know like how to pull a storyline along this. So in order for this not to happen, if you're anywhere in your second PhD year or even more than that in your third, fourth PhD, it's time to think about that in chapters. So once you've got that down, we're going to now focus on the main part of this video, which is going to be the short term Gantt diagram. Uh, this is something that I do every three months. So for every quarter of the year, I have a Gantt diagram with specific goals that I want to reach within these three months. So how to do that? The first step on how you create a Gantt chart like this is you pick the goals that you want to achieve in these three months, okay? So for me, as an example, I do computational fluid dynamics simulations, okay? And I have to like, what I want to do in these next three months is I want to completely wrap up the validation part. Like I want to show that my model works 100%. That's one goal that I want to achieve. Then I want to run a parameter study with the 
working model so that I can draw like some you know scientific conclusions from that so that I can draw some new knowledge from that and then finally this is like a huge huge goal of mine at the end of March this year I want to have a manuscript of a paper it's unrealistic for a paper to be published within three months but I want to have like a draft a done manuscript all written by me that I can then submit okay so these are my three main goals and then once I've written down these three main goals I plug them into ChatGPT okay um, if you don't want to do that leave it out but it's also I mean ChatGPT is really good in breaking down these tasks because that would be step number two to break down these huge chunks of tasks into subtasks into manageable bite-sized pieces so that you know okay I have to do this that and that until you know to reach the goal so you plug it into ChatGPT and you can use the prompt that I will put on the screen here and uh, then it will create a list of like subtasks you need to get done in order to reach your goal so for example for my manuscript it would say okay you should finish up your simulations, do like a simulation plan, you should write the literature review part, the methodology part and so on and so on until basically your manuscript is done, right? So you divide it into subtasks and now the fun parts begin. You're now going to copy all the big tasks and the subtasks into your Excel sheet on the left side from top to bottom just like one row and then on the top column horizontally you're going to include the timestamp so in which time do you want to achieve these goals again ChatGPT is super good with this time management things but you can also just do it yourself so basically you're going to go by week that's how I do it so for each week I basically um, put the month in and then the weeks in and then I mark down which goals I want to pursue in which weeks in the upcoming three months and once you're done with that you're done with your gun chart and this is something most people underestimate the value of it because basically every single week on Monday you can open up your gun chart and you can look at oh where am I what do I have to do to keep on track with the time do I have to make any changes and what do I have to do to progress in my work in my research and this really eliminates also the thing that a lot of researchers dig into a rabbit hole where they are just stuck with a thing and then they just keep working and working and working and working on that and they don't make any progress, okay? And this is something that you have to determine. Obviously, you need the right mix of at this one time you have to keep working on a problem, but at the same time, in the end, you want to graduate with a PhD, right? And you need some results and you need some progress because what are, what are you going to write down in your PhD in the end? So having that right mix to give yourself a limited amount of time to say, okay, two months, but that's the limit like if after two months I don't make any any progress on this I'm gonna cut it I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna do something else I'm gonna move to a different problem and uh, yeah this is a big issue and Gantt diagrams really help a lot with that all right I hope this short video on Gantt diagrams was useful for you um, I ha had to be forced into my first Gantt diagram because in at Imperial College we have to submit like these progress reports and also submit a Gantt diagram with it to show like our research progress. That was like the long-term Gantt diagram that I talked about over several years. And after doing that, I loved it so much that I did it for these three months that was then my own initiative, the short-term Gantt diagrams, because it's super useful. But I also had to be forced into it. So I kind of want to motivate you and pass that on to you so that you do it yourself as well. All right, if you like this video and you could draw some value out of it, I urge you to like, comment or subscribe to this channel because this is still a baby channel. We're super small and every single like and comment and engagement means a lot. And the more we grow, the better video I, videos I can produce for you guys. Also, don't forget to follow me on Instagram as well, where I post daily bite-sized academic tips for you to get inspired from and to learn something new. Do make sure to check out the QR code and scan it and subscribe follow me there as well. Finally, if you want to download the Gantt Diagram Excel draft that I have for you, you can just check out the link in the description box below. And that's all I have to say for this video. I hope you're doing well wherever you are and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!